Note I said with that shirt that it was a double stitch. But what that means is right here on the sleeve of the shirt, if you notice on a lot of your t-shirts, the new ones, Howdy friends, welcome back to the Eclectic Sam YouTube channel, and welcome to my Eclectic Cornery YouTube, where I talk about selling on eBay, thrifting, history, travel, and other things. Before we get started, you see that subscribe button down below? If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that. It doesn't cost you a thing. It helps me out, plus it gives you the ability to see what videos are coming in the future. Today is Wednesday, November 25th, and we sold one item yesterday. Let me show you what that was. The one item that we sold yesterday is this uh, Wear First brand man's gray shirt. It sold for $12.99 plus shipping. That shirt could have sold for a little bit more, but... It had a little spot on it, a little, not necessarily a stain, but a little dirty spot on it. And that brings up a conversation that is, uh, may eat quite a bit with uh, clothing resellers. Do you wash your clothes or do you not? Well, my philosophy is 99.9% .9 of the people are going to donate clothes to the thrift store that are clean. So that little spot was probably either a stain or something that was just missed. The heavy soiling or something like that. I don't wash the clothes that I get from thrift stores. Now if I get them from an estate or something like that where they've been in a closet for a long time and have a mildewy smell, I will clean those or treat them for smells. But that shirt right there I knew would sell, and what I did was I thoroughly went over it, made sure that was the only spot on it, took good pictures of it, and put in the description that it was, it did have that spot on it, so people would know when they were looking to buy. <clears throat> Plus, I priced it accordingly. A lot of people won't sell anything that has a spot on it. But if it's a popular shirt that you know will sell, and say the spot's in an inconspicuous place, nine times out of ten, people will buy it if it's at a dis deep discounted price. So think about that in the future. Instead of redonating or throwing away something, just discount it accordingly and still make some money off of it. It's Friday, November 27th. Yesterday was Thanksgiving here in the United States. For anybody that was celebrating it, I hope you had a great time and filled your stomachs up with some turkey and mashed potatoes and all that. <clears throat> but uh, let's see what we sold in the past couple of days. First up, I sold two little Matchbox brand cars. Uh, the little GMC Wrecker there sold for $6.99 with free shipping. And going to a different uh, customer, the little Abarth Rally car, it went for $11.99 plus, uh, $11.99 with free shipping as well. Those uh, Matchbox cars came from a uh, local thrift store. <laughs> Most of your thrift stores in the toy departments, they do little baggies of uh, Matchbox and Hot Wheels cars. And I always go through those and look and see what's available. Usually they have five or six cars in them, and they're usually a couple of dollars for the bags. But uh, what I do is I look at them, and look for the older cars usually, but um, what I do is I set up at a uh, uh, swap meet here at my local racetrack. <clears throat> they do it about once a month. 
And uh, what I do is when I grab those little bags, mm -hmm. I pull out any of the ones that are worth about $5 or more mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. sell those as filler items on eBay. And the ones, the cheaper ones, mm -hmm. I put in tubs, set them out at the swap meet, and I'll sell them for a dollar a piece. Or some of them, I'll, the real cheap newer ones, mm -hmm. I'll sell for two for a dollar. Mm -hmm. So that's a good way of secondary uh, income going to thrift, going to uh, swap meets, mm -hmm. and uh, it gives me ability to have some more filler items, and I make a few bucks off of the uh, higher dollar ones. And sometimes I look up and I find a twenty, thirty, forty dollar car. So uh, think about that when, you know, I've talked about die-cast cars in the past, but that's another way to make money off of die-cast cars. Here we have another item. Uh, it's a Cheech and Chong Up in Smoke vintage t-shirt. I think it was vintage. The label looked uh, pretty old on it, and it was, but it was only, it was a double stitch on the, uh, the sleeve, so... I wasn't positive, so I didn't price it high. Um, I, pun intended, high up in smoke, Cheech and Chong. But uh, it sold for eleven ninety nine plus shipping. Note I said with that shirt that it was a double stitch. Well, what that means is right here on the sleeve of the shirt, if you notice on a lot of your t-shirts, the new ones have two stitches on the seam. The old, the vintage shirts usually have just one stitch. Um, that is the easiest, best way to look for a vintage t-shirt. But also the other best way is the tag on, or the label or the size on the back of the shirt, on the inside back. Vintage shirts are always going to have a sewn-in tag on the back of it. If it looks vintage, but it has a printed size or label in it, you know, just like the printed the printed part of my t-shirt here, but it's printed inside there on the back, that's the other way to tell that it's a new shirt. It's just a vintage look, but it's a new shirt. So keep an eye out on that with, when you're looking for t-shirts to sell. Well, those were a few uh, decent little sales in the past couple of days. Something I wanted to touch on uh, also, uh, something that hit hard for me here recently in the past couple of days. Um, if All of you know that I am disabled. Here's my little walker that I use a good bit. But I also keep a cane in my vehicle for when I'm going into stores where I get to use a buggy. Um, somebody stole my uh, carved uh, wooden cane that I keep in my car. Um, of course, it's not a free-for-all when you leave your car unlocked, but it, it was my fault. I left my car unlocked, and uh, somebody stole it. I love that cane. It, it's a beautiful carved cane helped me have conversations with people because people would always stop and admire it. Uh, plus, it fit my hand perfectly. Um, so, I'm going to have to start looking for another cane to carry. But, um, what relates that to us as resellers is, I know, just like me, a lot of you will go to a thrift store and you'll leave your stuff in the car for a couple of days. Always make sure that you lock your cars. Uh, the police officer that did the statement on it said that 99% of the time, a, per a thief, if the car is unlocked, it's just going to keep on walking. The police officer said probably in the last three years of any break-ins or thefts, none of them have been where they broke the car's window and got into the car. Thieves are lazy. So think about that when you're out thrifting or even your personal belongings. Make sure that you lock your car. 
Well, that's about it for this uh, video. I've uh, enjoyed doing another video for y'all, and uh, thanks to all the new subscribers. I hope you're enjoying it, and hope you stick around and see what we do in the future with some traveling, hopefully, and so forth. If you haven't already, make sure you hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't, so you can see what's coming in the future. And comment below any comments that you might have or questions or suggestions. I'm always open to suggestions. Uh, but until next time, my friends, love you. Bye.